Welcome to the Grovel Unknown Talk Show, Season Two. Atrey Ghosh from Create Etc. Akash Jagtap Tanya. The show gets handed over to Tanya. Request everybody to mute their mics. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tanya Sajjamani, and it's my privilege, on behalf of Growell Foundation, to welcome all you here. We are pleased to be able to share this platform with those of you who have been with us for a long time now, as well as to those who are new to our Unlockdown Talk Show Season Two, Session Four. All the viewers are requested to kindly subscribe to our channel to not miss out on any of the important sessions. Talking about Growell. Growell was found three years back with a vision to grow one lakh urban jungles in five years, with its three pillars of promoting talk shows, exploring outdoor activities, and expanding urban jungles. We are honored to have with us Atrey Ghosh, ma'am. Ma'am is a designer, creative writer, and an art teacher with strong roots in handmade arts. She grew up in India, from Nagpur, Pune, and Mumbai, and moved to Bay Area in 2012. After pursuing her master's degree in critical, conceptual, and curational practices in architecture from Columbia University in New York, Atriya Ma'am has taught children of all ages and abilities in the Bay Area since 2015. Her work can be found on Create Etc. on the internet. Uh, a little, little more about Atriya from her brother's perspective. uh she has been a hyperactive kid uh, in the childhood as i have seen i was also a hyperactive kid her hyperactivity was of a different level and i'm very happy to see here today at this amazing stage and uh, groville foundation is very very happy to have you back in our family our mission as all of you know is growing one lakh jungles and uh, uh, atrey today is here to show us how we can keep our mental strength uh, strong and how we can keep our everything fit and fine and uh, so that we can all work uh, together towards our single goal so with further ado without any further ado i would uh, uh, request atrey to come over and uh, guide her through this session she will be de- doing a demo I request all the people who are watching this to uh, subscribe this show the growell foundation is a voluntary organization based in nagpur and we are doing a lot of these activities please subscribe share leave your comments thoughts atrey will be taking us through an amazing session aapke mann mein jo jo thoughts aayega aap likhiye she is a girl who likes to talk to people so if you comment she will definitely acknowledge your comment and she will get, get back to your answer so over to atrey request everybody else to mute their microphones thank you tanya and thank you dada thank you abhik for introducing me so nicely so kindly um hello everybody thank you for joining me today here um as as in the introduction said um i'm a hyperactive kid at heart always and i'm a designer i'm a writer and i'm a teacher so um what we are going to be doing today is in the beginning i'm going to introduce myself a little bit better um tell you what we are going to be doing today which is going to be making a mandala and not just making a mandala but doing it mindfully and while we are doing it i'm going to talk you through a little bit about my life how i came here uh what my inspiration is and hopefully my story will inspire you to also use art as a form of you know cheap therapy if you will um so let us get started um what you are going to need if you're going to follow along with me is just very simple few things you are going to need a piece of paper you are going to need something to draw with so a pencil and a piece of paper are going to be your basic supplies now if you're feeling creative and you have more supplies at home feel free to use them you can use paints you can use markers crayons um you can even be creative and make something out of cut paper so it doesn't have to be something that you are making just with a pencil or so um while we are doing this i'm going to go slow and while you are also talking uh to me i can um you know 
give you answers and and chat back with you. So feel those feel free to get those questions coming, and uh, let us get started. Let me put some music on here so we can get into the zone. Where are you guys all joining from? Type in the chat what city, what place you are all from. All right. So nice to have you guys here. So what I'm going to be using is a pencil but I'm also going to be using a marker so you guys can really see what we're up to. Um, let me get my overhead camera going. Let me see. All righty. There we go. So I'm going to be using my marker here. Um, if you're using a pencil, you know, mistakes are always like welcome. I call them happy accidents, like, you know, like we do in art school, um, happy accidents. So erasers are completely okay to be used today. Something else that can come in handy is going to be a ruler or a straight edge of some sort. So I've been making mandalas all my life, um, but I didn't know that they were called mandalas. So let me show you a few examples here. So this is one that I made um, a few weeks ago. And to do this one, I really used something that I found off of the internet, which was a free template of a circle. Now we are going to be making our own circles and we are going to be embracing any kind of um, imperfections that can happen. So if you guys are ready to get started, oh, hello, Nagpur and Vadala. All right. Good evening, Samir. Let's go. Okay. Hello there. So nice to have you guys join. So to begin with, what I'm going to do is I'm not even going to start drawing or anything. First of all, I'm going to set an intention. So sit nicely. Um, if you have, I sometimes use some essential oils on my table so that I'm feeling calm, like lavender or anything that you like smelling. Um, I also have my tea here because I always like to snack and drink tea um, while I'm making art. And I have some music going in the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just sit for a minute and set an intention. So you can do this with me, sit with your feet flat on the floor, with your back straight, hands on your lap maybe, and take a deep breath in with me through your nose and hold it in for a second and let it out through your mouth. Then I'm going to set an intention. Um, if you have any intention that you normally set, tell that to yourself in your mind. Um, I normally pray for the world, pray for my family, and um, give gratitude to God for letting me do what I love doing so much, which is making art. So the world is a crazy place today. There are so many people suffering. So I'm just going to take a moment here, set an intention, and pray that everybody is happy and they find healthiness and joy in their life then I can get started. So mandalas, um, you guys might know, but mandalas, although they are really popular right now, they really have a very ancient history. Um, I'm not going to speak too much about the history, partly because I'm sure there are experts better than I who can talk about those, um, but they have roots in Hinduism and Buddhism. And mandala or mandal as it's sometimes called, um, literally in Sanskrit means a circle. It also means a center. So it can be a diagram, it can be a chart or a pattern that represents the cosmos, that represents the whole universe and, you know, beyond even. Um, and it represents it metaphysically and symbolically. 
So it could be like when we are making our mandal today or mandala today, you can think about what makes the universe for you. So to begin with, we start with a circle. So I'm going to start off by first taking my marker here, or you can use your pencil. And I'm just going to imagine a big circle. You want to make sure the circle is big enough to fill your entire paper. So as you see, I'm not even using my marker right now. I'm just using my pointer finger and I'm making a big circle. And when I'm feeling good about my circle here, I'm going to go ahead and draw the circle. It doesn't have to be perfectly circular because, you know, we are human beings. We are not machines. So make an imperfect circle. Maybe the circle looks like a potato. Maybe it look like, looks like a rock. It's fine. Starting with one big circle. Now, if at this stage you are like, oh, this is already getting too much and I don't want to draw a circle without help, feel free to use help. You can take a plate or a bowl or a lid of a jar or something like that. And you can use that to trace your circle out. So what I have here in my hand is just a paper plate and make sure that it fits your paper. Make sure that it's big. You want to draw the circle large and start off with that first big circle. This is going to be the basis of our mandala. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find what I think is going to be the center of the mandala. So again, without you know making a mark directly on paper, I'm just using my hands and I'm imagining where the center needs to be. And when I'm ready, I'll go ahead and put a little dot right there in the center. So I really started doodling as soon as I could hold a pencil in my hand. Um, I used to make up these random stories and poems in my head and um, I would write them in a notebook. So a lot of times my um, inspiration would come from the stories that I was reading. You know, I was a big fan of the adventures of Tintin growing up, um, the Harry Potter series. Um, eventually I started reading the classics, Jane Austen. So sometimes my poems and stories would be derived from imaginary characters like that. Um, but sometimes, most times really, it would be my own life. Um, you know, we feel so many emotions throughout the day. Sometimes we feel, you know, calm, happy, joyful. Most often, though, we feel negative emotions. Those are the ones that we feel more strongly. Feelings like anger, helplessness. Why can't I do something about the situation? Um, jealousy. Why does, you know, why does my life have to look like this and somebody else's life looks like something else? Uh, pain, um, both emotional as well as physical. A lot of us are fighting invisible battles. Um, so we a lot of times feel that, feel those feelings of frustration and pain as well. So I used my poetry and my doodling as a way to deal with my emotions, deal with my frustrations and express myself. Most times we, when we are feeling alone and we feel that um, there's nobody hearing us, um, but those feelings and those thoughts still need to be said. So, um, so I used my poetry as a means for that. Like if I felt that I was not being heard by my friends or by my family, um, which happens even when you have the best of families, I would use my words and my art to express myself. And I'm completely self-taught. So in the introduction, Tanya said that I went to architecture school, uh, but my art really is completely self-taught. So I would just take my pencil and on the back of my notebooks, I would just doodle and doodle and doodle. Um, and that's how it all started. But going back to our mandala here for a minute. Um, so, so far we have this big circle and a dot here in the center. So let's get that overhead thing going again. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. So, so far I just have a big circle and a dot in the center. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make some more concentric circles inside this big circle. I would suggest start with at least three or four, and then as needed, you can make more. So I'm going to just go around this center point and keeping my eye and my mind fixed on this point, maybe think of a favorite person in your life or a season or a song that makes you happy. And I'm just focusing on that center point here. And I'm making a few concentric circles. There is no right or wrong way of doing this. You can make the circles close to each other or you can make the circles a bit far away. I would suggest in the interest of keeping things fresh and keeping things, you know, moving, you can make some circles that are close to each other and some other circles that are a bit further away. So, so far I have made one, two, three, four, five, and this big first circle was my sixth. So make about three to four circles that are concentric, that have the same circle as our first beginning one. And as we are doing that, we are going to start thinking about how we want to divide the mandala. Now, mandalas will have symmetry. Um, symmetry is, of course, something that looks the same on one side and the other side. In mandalas, since it's on inside a circle, the symmetry is radial or rotational. So there, the, whatever you are making on one side gets repeated all over. This is one of the things that really, I feel, lets my mind relax and wander. So initially, when I'm making my circles, I make it very mindfully. I need my circles to be in a certain place. But then once I start designing it, that is when I let my mind wander. And then eventually, I'll tell you when it comes back to the, to the mandala. So at this stage, I'm going to divide the mandala itself. So I'm taking my ruler, and I know there's a bit of lag with my overhead, so I apologize for that. So I'm taking my ruler, and I'm going to start off by making a plus sign, if you will. And the plus sign is going to go through the center. So I have a line going through, and 90 degrees, I'm going to have another line going through. So think that you are dividing a pizza into a bunch of slices. Starting off with just dividing it into four quadrants. And then I'm going to divide it into four more. So I'm going to look at just one of these arcs and think about where the center of that arc is. Again, I'm not using any protractors. I'm not using any kind of tools. I'm just letting my mind do this by myself. So I have one dot right there and another one over there. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that. And now my mandala has been divided into eight sections. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys are following along, because I would really love it if you are um, sketching and drawing and doodling with me here. Um, also, if you have any kind of questions for me as I'm talking, uh, feel free to ask those at any point of time. Let me see. Okay. I can see there's a lot of my Nagpur friends joining. Very cool. Okay. So, so far I have eight sections in my mandala. The next thing that I do is interesting because the next sections won't go all the way through the center point of my mandala. So I'm gonna start off again by dividing one of my sections into half, but this time I'm going to only cover the first two or three sections. So this is what I mean here. So I have my section divided. I'm connecting it with my center, I'm connecting the ruler with my center, but I'm only drawing the lines on the first two circles. 
And I'm going to continue doing that for all of my sites. So again, I'm dividing this section. And when I am making the line, I'm just drawing the line on those top two areas. And I keep going with all of my other sections. So as you can see, the mandala is already starting to happen. You are already starting to get a guideline going of sorts. At this stage, there is no design. At this stage, it is still planning. It is still laying the foundation. Um, you know, I have architecture background. So you know that without a strong foundation, your building is going to fall. It's true in life as well. Um, if you have good thoughts, if you consume good material, you know, good books, good music, if you hang out with good people, it's going to create a strong foundation to your life. Similarly, in my mandala, what I'm drawing right now, my foundation is going to really matter um, long term, depending on what the design ends up looking like. All right, glad to know, Manisha, you're drawing along with us. So let's see. So memories of my first doodle. Oh, gosh. Um, I don't know if I can really remember the first doodle per se, uh, but I've been told by my parents that I used to sketch behind my notebooks in school a lot. Um, the only thing that I remember doing is I used to draw a lot of eyes. I was fascinated by the human eye and I would just draw and somehow it ended up being the, always the left eye. So I would always draw the left eye of a person. Um, sometimes I would look into magazines and look at, you know, celebrities, photographs of beautiful people with beautiful eyes. Um, and I'm going to try and draw them on the back of my notebook. Um, that's what I really remember as as early doodling. Um, but I can definitely tell you once I went to college and then I did my master's from New York and I really got through all of my classes by doodling. Um, I'm one of those people who has to have their hands constantly moving. I need to be doing something. So um, in university, for example, I used to knit. So I would sit in a lecture and we were allowed to do it. So I would sit in the back of the lecture hall and I would knit and it would be this mindless activity, mindless repetitive acti activity that you're doing um, while still letting your mind focus on the on the lecture or the seminar. Um, in college too, my friends will tell you um, that I would often make little caricatures of all the people I knew, make up interesting, funny, or random, um, you know, comic book strips. Um, those, those are some early doodling uh, exercises that I remember. Nowadays, though, I doodle a lot more mindfully. I make time to make something with my hand every single day. That is my art practice. So even if life gets busy and you have your job and just make time, you know, you make time for having your three meals. So make five minutes in your day to draw something, to make something with your hands. So let's go back to the to the mandala. I hope whoever is joining us has some sort of a foundation ready already. So from here on, we are going to let our mind relax and wander. So at this stage, you are welcome to already start using colors if you have those with you. Um, I'm going to continue using my black marker for some more time. Now I do also have a thinner marker. So I have a thick black marker and a thin black marker. And I like having a bit of variety in my lines. So I'm going to do I'm going to do that. I'm going to use both of my markers here. And I'm going to start thinking about an inspiration. So think about what kind of lines and patterns are you attracted by? Do you wear a lot of solid clothes or do you wear a lot of patterns like I do? Um, look around you, wherever you are sitting, do you see any patterns? Uh, maybe your curtains have some patterns or maybe your couch has a pattern on it. So think about what your eye is getting attracted to. You don't have to do something that you don't like. So I like patterns of all sorts. I like geometric patterns. I like organic patterns. Um, something simple, if you haven't done this before, is to start with a geometric pattern. 
patterns made of simple shapes and lines like triangles or circles or squares. So I'll go back to my overhead camera and I'm going to show you how I begin my mandala here. Okay. Okay, so going back to my overhead here, I'm using my pin marker now because I wanna start off from the very center of my circle. So I'm going to start off by just making an arrow. You can make an arrow or you can make anything else you like. And when I have decided what I'm making, I'm just repeating that all around my circle. I'm keeping things very simple to begin with. I'm just making some triangles. I'll do the same thing on one of my other circles as well. While you're doing this, like let's say you have decided on this first triangle as your inspiration. Hi, Savarna. So as I've decided that this is going to be my first pattern, all I have to do is repeat this triangle or repeat this V shape. So I can really breathe and let my mind wander. When I'm meditating, I start off with setting an intention and then I really give myself a few minutes of grace where I let my mind wander, where I let my mind go anywhere it needs to go. Go to my calendar, all of the things that I need to do, um, you know, all of the people I need to call. Thank you, Sudeep. Think about all of the different places I could be at this point of time. Sometimes I feel really silly because I'm sitting here quietly doing meditation, but really I'm not even focusing. And I let my mind wander. I let my mind really do its thing. So when did I first discover mandalas? Oh, wow, that's a good question. I think I knew of a mandala as a mandala in grad school because that is when I took a few classes where we looked at world history and looked at different, um, you know, examples of um, examples of uh, physical evidences of mandalas um, started coming up. So, um, for example, a lot of temples in India will have a, um, a mandala, uh, for the lack of a better word. Um, if you guys have any interest in Vastu Shastra, you know that there is a pattern of a square and a square divided into four quadrants. And that has some something to do with mandalas as well, because it is also a representation of the cosmos, of the universe. Um, mandalas really started to blow up and become ubiquitous a few years ago uh, where, you know, all stores started carrying mandala books and adult coloring books started becoming a thing. Um, but um, the circles as the circle as a form of meditation, I feel I have used a lot more than even before I started making mandalas. Um, I have a series of paintings. I call it the white hot series of paintings. I have one behind me. This is a small, this is a small example, but I, I draw like big ginormous, um, you know, versions of these in many different colors. So as you can see, like I have been using circles a lot. I think I started using this pattern um, around 2013, I want to say. Um, I was going through a very rough time mentally and one day I just came back from a walk and I just had this urge to paint. So I just got some paint tubes out and I had a, um, I had a um, canvas ready going and I just dropped some paints on top and I didn't even want to use um, any brushes. So I just dipped my finger and just started drawing circles and circles and circles. And then those eventually end up being these white hot, white hot series. So circles has a lot to do with calming my mind. I feel like just the looseness 
of the circles is so relaxing to me. So going back to my overhead camera. So I have a couple of sections with some of these geometric patterns going. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to think of changing the pattern. So I can continue with some geometric shapes or patterns, like maybe I can do semicircles, but I'm really feeling spring in the air right now. You know, it's holy and there's colors and there's birds in the air. So I'm going to think of something to do with nature. So going back to inspiration, think about whatever makes you happy. Do you like flowers? Do you like leaves? Do you like the water? And I'm going to start off by thinking of something that reminds me of nature. So I just drew a simple leaf form here. And just in, as I said in the beginning, I'm going to repeat it along all of my sections. So I don't have any particular person that I recommend for taking up mandala meditation. Um, but I know that the Buddhist um, philosophy might be of help. So just repeating. And as you can see, I'm not just using shapes here. I'm also using some lines. I have this arrow shape here that I'm mimicking it to look like the veins of the leaves. And you can see that as soon as I start repeating it, something that was so simple, something that was a simple leaf shape or something that was a simple triangle starts becoming something a lot more. Mandalas also have a basis in the fact that everything in life is cyclic. So happiness, sadness, it's all a cycle. And also where you start, that is where you come back from time to time. I think I'm going to make some moon shapes out here. If you are joining along and, um, you know, drawing with me, know that I don't expect anybody to copy exactly what I'm doing. Make your own patterns, make your own shapes. Draw anything that feels good in the moment. And if you make mistakes, like I just did, embrace it. It is a beautiful oopsie or a happy accident. Now, mandalas are repetitive by their very nature, but I, as a self-taught artist, is all about breaking the rules. So you can always think that, hey, Atri is just kind of repeating the same pattern over and over again. What if I don't want to do that? What if I want to keep things interesting and maybe I'm just, I'm just bored of making the same thing over and over again? So you can change things up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to break my pattern and instead of making something and repeating it on every single one, maybe I'm going to skip a few. Let me see. I'm going to skip, let me skip three. So I'm going to skip one, two, three, and one, one, two, three, and one, one, two, three, and one and then starting back right where I began. So it is all about that cyclic nature, even when you miss something. So missing something is absolutely okay. You can also do this more mindfully. Right now, my mandala has been divided into so many different sections, but maybe I'm gonna just focus on those original four quadrants. So I'm thinking I'm going to make one extra line in there skip one and one extra line there and i can do the same thing for any of the other circles so all i'm doing now is i am just adding lines and patterns while i do this because i don't have to think about 
what design I'm making, but I'm just repeating something over and over again. This is where I focus on doing something well. So I'm trying to make my lines smooth and straight while being kind to myself, being okay if I make mistakes. But this is the part that really helps me focus. This is where I can lose track of time and really get my hand going, make something tactile. And going with the flow, drawing what feels right, making mistakes and then trying to turn those mistakes into something else. So you guys can see that it is starting to come together. And really the way you keep going is the way your minds and your thoughts are flowing. So I can literally sit here for the next two hours and keep drawing and keep adding details maybe even expand outside my big circle. Nothing says that you have to stay within the circle. So as you are seeing now, I'm making those little triangles and I'm going outside my circle. Draw outside the lines, if you will. But I think what I'm going to do is in a couple of minutes, I'll start talking to you about color and what that has done to my life. Um, let me see how we are doing on time. Do you guys have any questions for me so far? Feel free to ask me questions. One of the things about the lockdown has been that I have not been able to go anywhere, just like everybody you like everybody else here. Um, of course, we've been using a lot of these online platforms to stay in touch, but I do miss talking to people, seeing what they have to say, um, having discussions, answering questions, asking questions. So we'll keep going for another five or six minutes um, and then um, we can we can slowly start winding down. But let me start talking to you about the importance color has played in my life. So colors, I used to be a little afraid of colors. Um, I would, I grew up a tomboy. So I grew up wearing a lot of my older brother's clothes, um, emulating him. Um, most of my friends seem to be boys. So I did not really embrace color until I was in high school or even after that, to be honest. And I really found that colors help me feel a lot more joyful. Um, it, keep, it takes my mind off of the dreariness of every day. Um, of course, now I teach art. So I talk about color theory a lot and think about color combinations and where I derive my colors from. Let's see. Have mandalas helped you overcome stress and anxiety? Does it help in the cycle from sorrows to happiness, upliftment from depression in life? That's a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, absolutely. Um, mandalas absolutely has helped me deal with anxiety. Um, when I get into this cycle of overthinking something and it becomes a spiral, I need something to ground me. A lot of times, it's not another human being. A lot of times I need to be doing something because like I said, it's all about the hands and doing something with my hands for me. Um, a lot of times it's about doing something with my hands, feeling productive and getting my mind to get out of that rut of depressing, spiraling thoughts and just taking it out of it. It's not like you're redirecting it to something else. I'm not asking to, um, you know, I'm not when I'm meditating, I'm not asking that, oh, I'm suddenly super joyful. I just want to not be sad. So I'm thinking, how can I just take myself out from that, that cycle and just, just get out of the race for a bit? Um, and that the mandalas have definitely helped me do that. 
um, any kind of doodling, when you're doing something, when you're focused on a, on a task, that is all you are focused on. And as soon as you come out of it, and then, you know, five minutes later, half an hour later, you see something else, something beautiful that, that has come out, you can't help but feel positive, at least for a bit, um, and think that, that it's not quite that hopeless. So thank you for asking that. That was a great question. Colors too. I feel colors are another thing that really make me feel um, oh, that, 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 that it's a way of expressing myself. Um, there's a lot of um, theories about which colors are supposed to be happy. I know yellow gets a lot of rep as, as sunshiny colors. Uh, blue gets a lot of rep as a sad color. Um, I think it really is personal. It depends on you. Let's say that you went to the ocean or you went to the sea and you had a negative experience. Maybe you don't like water anymore. So you don't care about the color blue. Or maybe you're like me and blue is your absolute favorite color and you're fascinated by all the different kinds of blue and the fact that blue isn't quite so common in nature. So for colors, I would say start with something that makes you feel happy, maybe your favorite colors. And then going from there, see what other things go well with it. A lot of times I think about the color theory. I think about which colors make an impact and which colors are more soothing. So colors that will make an impact will be opposite colors or colors that have a high contrast. An example is yellow right next to a purple or blue right next to an orange or red right next to a green. So if you want your mandala to make a huge impact, you want to use colors that have a high contrast. At other times, you might want to use colors that are more soothing. So think about sunsets. What colors are going together? Um, yellows and oranges, oranges and reds, blues and greens. Um, thinking about the oceans again. So think about the colors that go well together. So going back to my overhead here, I am going to start with blue because blue is my absolute favorite color. If you have multiple shades of blue, you can use those. If you have just one, you can stick to that as well. Um, if you're using color, you can. Um, thank you, Ma. My Ma says, nice talk. Um, so when you're using colors um it really depends on what you're using i'm going to be using my markers here but you can use crayons color pencils um anything else that you have around um don't be too hung up about coloring perfectly um of course i am a perfectionist so when i start coloring something i need it to be a certain way it needs to be like just so it needs to be filling inside my shapes and it needs to be just so but that's me that's me that's a perfectionist um, when i teach art a lot of my really young kids my kindergartners and my first graders they show me that coloring inside the lines you know doesn't isn't always the best there's a lot to be said about about making making mistakes as as one would as an adult would think about and really embracing the messiness of life which you can translate into art so all i'm doing right now is i started off with my favorite color or one of my favorite colors and i am just repeating in the same way that i was drawing i start off in one of my sections and I just let my mind wander. As you see, I'm not overthinking it. I'm not thinking, oh, I need to start in the center and move out. I am just starting somewhere and letting things flow from there. Kind of like life. You just have to get started. You can't plan everything out. And once you just keep doing things, once you just keep moving, eventually things will fall into place and eventually things will turn out okay things will turn out beautiful even so just repeating my colors for now um, practically speaking 
when I'm coloring mandalas, I like to start with the bigger sections first and then move on to the smaller areas. Um, I think I personally do that because I need to feel productive. I need to be doing something all the time. So when I'm coloring in big sections, very quickly, you feel a sense of achievement. Um, so I'm just changing my colors here. I'm picking a darker blue now. And I don't even have to fill a color in. Perhaps what I'm going to do is instead of coloring one entire section, I'm just going to color it with some stripes. So what I'm doing right now is I'm not coloring things in. I'm just adding some lines inside an empty section. And this way, it's not, it's like, it's like you're adding to the mandala, but you're doing it with color. Oh, I made a beautiful oopsie. I skipped one of these. So when I make a beautiful oopsie or a happy accident like that, I go back and I turn that into an intentional thing. So what was happening here is I initially started off by just adding those dark blue um, lines next to my light blue semicircles. Uh, but here I made an oopsie and I started making it in a different section. So now all I'm going to do is embrace that and keep going. You're very welcome, Mithali. So we'll keep going here for a couple more minutes and then um, I will open it out to more specific questions if anybody has any. I'm going with a cool color scheme, I think. I'm gonna stick to blues and greens mostly. So I'm adding some green areas here. A lot of times you start making something and later on you realize what the inspiration behind it was. One time I was teaching a class and we, we were all working on making some bouquets of flowers. Um, and I didn't even realize, but the colors I chose were the colors of flowers that um, my husband brought me a couple of days ago. Very nice. Thank you for drawing with me. It's just repetitive. And while you're drawing, first you let your mind wander, but then you can focus it. I can I focus sometimes on making sure that the colors are just so. Or if you have that intention that you set in the beginning, like at the very beginning when I was um, setting an intention and, you know, sending out thoughts into the world, good thoughts into the world. You can do that while you're making your mandala as well. Thoughts are very powerful. Thank you, Papia. I'm gonna continue working on this. I think I'll add a few other greens here. So just going with the color scheme sometimes is fun. And sometimes, of course, it could be an explosion of colors too. I'm not being too careful. I want to make my colors sometimes go off of the lines because I'm only human. Having an art practice has been one of the most grounding things in my life. I feel so lucky and I feel so, so blessed that I'm able to do this as an art teacher. I can, I can do this every day and it really, really helps, um, helps me. My friends notice the difference too. 
my best friend who lives about 15 minutes away from me um she and i talk almost every day um or chat or text uh we try meeting up every week and she definitely notices uh when i'm feeling more calm versus when i'm feeling more antsy and the days that i'm calm are days where i have drawn or when the days that i've made something so find find it find whatever it is that makes you calm whether that is taking a walk or looking at something in nature or drawing something and make time for it you make time for everybody in your families you cook and you clean and you make the bed and you do laundry why don't you make time for yourself for your brains for your hearts and make it a practice be accountable tell yourself that it's not just something that i'm going to do once and 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 leave it because it was fun for one time but it brought me joy once so why don't i do it every thursday or every alternate thursday even and then very soon if it's really bringing you joy you will start doing it every day thank you rajesh i know i'm talking today while i'm making this really though the thing you want when you're doing something like this is to have a distraction free space maybe take your notebook outside in the balcony with a cup of tea or turn your phone off or put it on silent you don't have to answer every single phone call at just when it when it comes for the 5 or 10 minutes you are doing this every day give it the attention and the respect it deserves because it's helping your mind to me music helps a lot too so a lot of times when i'm i'm drawing i will put on music of some sort it can be classical music it can be pop music just anything that i'm feeling in the mood So as you can see it's starting to come together and i've been going from the outside in mostly because i like using up the big spaces first but you know while i'm doing this i'm thinking that that kind of reflects life too you want to go from the outside in we always look outside into the world we are consuming television and books and media and news and social media and all of that um but going from the outside in so something that is happening quite organically for me while i'm making this mandala is i'm going from the outside in and and i'm thinking that oh maybe that is what is happening in my life too that i'm sitting here and instead of looking out into the world i'm looking inside myself and seeing seeing myself for who i really am as far as far as the marks go on the paper the marks don't even have to be there i drew some shapes and some lines but if nothing else you could just fill in colors in different areas and see what that does So a few years ago I decided that because making art was so important for me I wanted this to be my life's work. So even with my architecture background um I took I took kind of the bold decision of moving away from architecture and focusing on art both art for me and and teaching because teaching is something that has been a life's passion. 
so I got an got a job. I got an internship at a art studio at a local art studio. From there on, I got some experience of teaching, and then I started applying to some schools. So now I teach at several different schools here in the Bay Area, um, and I also teach online. Um, even before the pandemic, I was teaching online because I had some friends in New York who wanted me to teach them some of my art techniques. So we would meet up on Skype or on FaceTime and we would, you know, chat with a with a glass of wine or with some tea. And we would make art. So we just have a few more minutes before the end of our session. So let me see. Thank you, Mira. If you end up finishing these mandalas and feel like sharing, please do so. I'm at Create Etc. on the internet, on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, feel free to tag me. All right, what is Create Etc.? Um, so yeah, I haven't talked about Create Etc., uh, which is my passion. So in about 20, well, about 2003 is when I started a blog. Um, it was a blog on, you know, just on Google and it was a place where since I was making a lot of things by myself, I would just take photos and put them up. Um, it was also a blog where I was adding some of my thoughts in, um, in writing as well. Um, my best, one of my best friends who lives in Pune now, um, she gave me the suggestion that this needs to be something bigger. This cannot just be a blog. Um, so in 2013, I started making it more formal. So I started creating artworks to sell, um, creating artworks that were custom made. So this is my this is my passion. Create Etc. is my passion project where I try and combine design with words and I create things like invitations, paintings. Um, I give suggestions on home decor, just everything and anything in between. Um, and, um, and, this, and this is still also, it still has that blog element where it's still a place where I'm posting the artwork that I do. So shall we, shall we wind down now? Yes. Thank you, so uh, thank you so much for this wonderful session. And I really like your artwork, you know, also the color schemes are really lovely. My personal favorite is tur turquoise, as you can see. Everywhere in my room is turquoise and blue. Those are my personal favorite colors, color palette. And also along with you, I have did, I did some of the doodling stuff over here as well. So I would oh, like to show cool. you. Yeah. Yes, please. So this is not Mandela Mandela, but it's something related to that. So as you can see, I really like to draw some ovals and circles. And I found a, I made a bowl out of it. So. When I was doing this, uh, like I was thinking about my project and um, coconut balls came in my mind. So that's how I did that. The second, uh, second art of which I did is isometric work of a house. So making all the parallel lines, what we can achieve, I tried that. And at the third, I made an eye. Oh, and beautiful. If you this, so there's a moon over there and the eye. So I don't know. I was just thinking and randomly I end up doing this. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. That is what and I hope one, to achieve with sessions like this, like yeah. having people tap into their own creativity. Wonderful. Right. right. I really enjoyed what you said. And I also like that uh, the points you have mentioned that cheap therapy. Uh, I really like that because uh, sometimes we go, we find somebody else too who can guide us throughout our sessions. 
but this is this thing if we manage to do every day and we form a proper routine so it will i think eventually help us all right after uh, i think within a week we can show you uh, good things uh, after you know once you start this habit having said that even though this is cheap therapy get help from professionals everybody if you need it yeah so what do you tanya do we have any questions yeah we'll take four questions and then we'll you know sounds good uh, so ma'am the first question which came up was how often do you do this mandala meditation how do i do the mandala meditation um so as i showed you in the process today i start off by having a space that is conducive to me doing meditation that can mean turning off my phone um asking my family to give me 5 10 minutes half an hour of privacy i like having nice smells around me so i might light a candle or some incense or i use a bit of like essential oils or something like that um and i like having something to drink like a tea a glass of tea or a glass of water something like that um uh, then i start off by setting an intention tell myself um you know repeat a mantra if you will um or send out some thoughts into the world and then from then on i start off with a circle and from that circle because everything in in life is cyclical from that circle i let my mind wander for a bit um while i'm making all of the different divisions in the circle and then as going inside that is where i start focusing and mom how often do you do it how often do i do it so um i draw every single day i do it at least once a day sometimes multiple times um i do it while having breakfast or at the end of the day um if the day is going to get super busy um drawing is every day i would say mandalas happen at least once a week although it's not that mindful i let i i do i let my mind wander and do many different kinds of artistic things so you might have a lot like a good collection for it yes <laughs> uh, do mandalas help you introspect do you get unanswered questions of daily life while drawing mandalas Yes. Oh, great. That that was a great question and absolutely I do. Um I'll give you an example. So in architecture college, um I went to architecture college in Pune and um in I believe it was third year, so five year course and in the third year um we had a um Uh, we were we were we were all supposed to be designing a parking structure and um if anybody here has has gone to architecture college you would know that just getting parking sorted out is one of the hardest things that you can do just making sure the cars can turn correctly and there's enough number of spots etc etc so i was having because i was i think there was a minimum number of cars that needed to be fit in and i was just not able to do it and i was frustrated and i had stayed up too late and i was highly caffeinated um so i was like you know what i'm just going to stop all of this and go to bed um so i slept for a few hours i woke up and i started doodling while doodling it just came to me i don't know how to describe it but it just did so uh you know taking a break from whatever it is that is keeping you up at night is important whether that means taking a break through art or taking a break through walking in nature or volunteering a lot of times when you are working like which is why i love your work as um in the global foundation because it's a volunteer run organization it's it's wonderful that you do something that is not selfish something that you do, you're doing for somebody else um and and that will will take worries off of your minds too Uh, ma'am how do mandalas calm a person down i believe it is the repetitive nature of it um anything repetitive when you whether you are um walking in which you are taking repetitive steps or you are drawing something and it is the same thing over and over and over again a line a circle um that i believe is the is the answer something repetitive and something which is ongoing something that doesn't stop in the circle yeah 
Okay. Agash, we'll uh, sign up with a word of thanks. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think a big sir is here. So no, I, I had one that. question. I had one question for Aditi. Yes. Uh, Aditi, what would be your uh, message to all the people uh, who are who are uh, watching your show, either now or later in the recordings? Uh, what would be the final message that you want to give from this talk? Why was this talk important, especially in these times? And uh, what are the secrets that Mandala can uh, uh, unlock in one person? Uh, how can one person find himself better? How can one person internalize better? I think there are uh, a lot of these amazing questions that came to my mind. Uh, 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 your thoughts on this before we close. Absolutely. Um, my final message is make art. Art is not something that is found in museums. Art is something that is all around you. Art is living uh -huh. your life in a certain way. Um, art is not something, even though it could be something that you do five minutes a day, it is really something that you are already doing every single day, every single minute, every single breath you are taking. Um, I would say that if there's one thing I want you to take away from, from this hour with me is make things mindfully. Um, don't just do things because they want to be, do things mindfully. Um, and make time for things that make you happy. Um, I don't have to think that, what was your second question, Dada? The second question is, uh, uh, how can uh, the experience of drawing mandalas um, spiritually elevate a person? That's a very good question too. Um, spiritual elevation can look very different for different people. For me, spiritual elevation is thinking about the divine in every single minute, which is harder, you know, which is harder than it sounds like. Um, and when I'm making art, I treat it as divine. I treat it with respect. I make sure that I'm making a space for it. I'm making sure things are clean, kind of like how you would do a, um, a how, how you would how you would pray, how you would do worship. Um, treating your art sacred, but letting that flow into the rest of your life. Treating every single person you meet as sacred. Uh, treating every interaction as sacred. Um, and that is how that is how I would. That, that's how I I try and elevate my spirituality using art uh, and hope that it just translates into all other areas of my life as well. Thank you, Aditi. That was a very candid answer. Uh, we are at one hour, seven minutes. I think, Tanya, we should wrap this up now. Thank you, Aditi. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was an amazing session. Thanks. It was lovely being here. And um, thank you, everybody, for joining. Um, happy Holy to everybody and happy Monday. Um, I hope you guys find peace wherever you are. Yes. So, Tanya, your uh, mic is muted. I'll start with the word of thanks. I deem a great honor to propose a word of thanks to all those who have helped us in making this session a resounding success. First of all, I would like to propose a hearty word of thanks to our chief speaker for today's session, Athre Ghost Ma'am, for an enlightening session. I would like to express my profound gratitude to Dr. Abhir Ghosh and Akash Shabda for conducting amazing talk shows every week. I would also like to thank all the viewers who came in and gave their time. Thank you. Um, I really love the concept of you that uh, making mistakes are happy accidents. And I think this gives us a uh, liberty and freedom to create whatever we want. So I really loved it and I took it today. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad you took that away. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. I, I will now take the opportunity of uh, singing the Growl jingle with all of you.
I have some audience here. I'm sure they'll be shocked. Uh, here goes. I don't care. If you're short of ideas, just chill. If you're short of ideas, just chill. Here we are, the team of Growill. If you're short of ideas, just chill. Here we are, the team of Growill. Where there's will, there's always Growill. Grow will, grow will, grow will, grow will, grow will, grow will. Thank you, friends. The aim of Grow Will Foundation is growing one lakh jungles, and that is not possible without each one of you. Comment on the uh, section uh, below, and uh, I am leaving my number here. Uh, you can connect with me. We will be happy to have you as a volunteer in the foundation. And with that, it's good night from all of us. Thank you. Have a rocking week ahead. Thank you. Like this video and subscribe us. We will bring you a lot of amazing content in the future. Thank you so much. Please subscribe, comment, share, show love.